Four Feet, Two Sandals, written by Karen Lynn Williams and Kadra Mohammed, illustrated by Doug Chakra. Chai- Four Feet, Two Sandals. Lena raced barefoot to camp to the camp entrance where relief workers threw used clothing off the back of a truck. Everyone pushed and fought for the best clothes. Lena squatted and reached, grabbing what she could. The crowd began to leave. In the dust at Lena's feet lay a brand new sandal. It was yellow with a blue flower in the middle. And when she slipped it on her foot, it fit perfectly. Lena was 10, but she had not worn shoes for two years. She looked around for the matching sandal. A girl stood nearby. She was thinner and darker than Lena, and she wore a blue and yellow sandal. Assalamu alaikum, Lena greeted her. Peace be with you. The girl only stared. She was dressed in a shawl kameez. Her feet were cracked and swollen, as Lena's had been when she first arrived at camp. Suddenly, the girl turned, taking the matching sandal with her. In the morning, Lena went to do the washing, wearing one beautiful sandal. She picked her way to the stream, careful to keep her sandal out of the filth. Her old shoes had been ruined in the, on the many miles of walking from Afghanistan to Peshawar, the refugee camp in Pakistan. She had carried her brother, Najib, no bigger than a water jug then but just as heavy. When she looked up from her scrubbing, the girl from yesterday was standing over her. She wore one sandal that she bent over and removed. Grandma says it's stupid to only wear one. She placed a sandal at Lena's feet. Then she turned and walked away. Wait! Lena grabbed both sandals and followed her. I am Lena. The girl turned slowly. I am Feroza. Lena held the sandals out. We can share. What good is one sandal for two feet? Feroza frowned. You wear them both today, and I'll wear them tomorrow, Lena smiled. Four feet, two sandals. Feroza smiled too. She took the sandals and put them on. Tomorrow they will be yours. The two girls greeted each other as they carried their jugs for water the next day. Lena put the sandals on, and they waited together in the long line. Everyone in the camp was waiting for a new home. Mama went to meetings about being resettled. The girls stayed in at Lena's tent with Ismatu and Najib. They were careful to keep the sandals away from the two boys, for Ismatu wanted to pull at the flowers, and Najib wanted to chew on them. My father and sister were killed in the war, Lena told her friend. Mama and I had to run with Ismatu and Najib in the night. Feroza nodded, and two tears ran down her cheek. I have only my grandmother now. When they did not have work to do, Lena and Feroza crept up to the windows of the school and peeked inside. The school was small with only enough room for the boys to study. The girls practiced their names in the dirt and brushed the marks away so no one would see their mistakes. Sometimes each girl wore one sandal. The other children pointed and giggled, but Lena and Feroza did not care. In the evenings, the sky turned deep blue and the first stars began to sparkle. Lena and Feroza watched for the silver of the, the sliver of the crescent moon that signaled the beginning of Ramadan. They shared memories and whispered their dreams for a new home. One morning, they went to the stream and washed their sandals to keep them looking new. Lena, come quick, Feroza's grandmother called. Your mother says your name is on the list. Feroza grabbed the sandals and the two girls ran ahead to the office. Lena stood on tiptoes and squinted at the sign. Mama's name! It's here! We are going to America! She looked at her friend. My name is not there, 
Feroza said quietly. She looked at her feet as she spoke. Then she bent down and took the sandals off. She handed them to Lena. You cannot go barefoot to America. Feroza gave Lena a hug. When it was time to leave, the relief workers gave Mama a large, square, white bag with numbers on it. All of your important papers are in this bag, he said. Feroza and her grandmother came to say goodbye. Lena pointed at her feet. Look, Mama saved her sewing money. She has bought us shoes for America. Real shoes, Feroza admired the new black leather. Here, Lena said, it is your day to wear these. The tears in her eyes were not for the sandals. Assalamu alaikum, Feroza said as she took the faded yellow and blue sandals. Peace be with you. Lena followed the others to the bus. Wait, Feroza called as she ran to her friend. You must keep one. She handed Lena one sandal. What good is one sandal? It is good to remember, Feroza held up the other sandal. Four feet, two sandals. Lena felt the tears make a trail down her cheek. She slipped the sandal into her bag and climbed on the bus. Feroza ran alongside as the bus began to move. Lena leaned out the windows. We shall share again in America, she called. Author's note. People who flee their country because of fear of persecution are called refugees. At the time we were writing this story, there were more than 20 million refugees worldwide. The majority of refugees are children. This story is based on Kahadra's experience with refugees in Peshawar, a city in the Afghanistan-Pakistan border. Decades of war and instability in Afghanistan have forced millions of Afghani people to flee their homes to neighboring countries. Many of them live in makeshift camps in and around Peshawar. Some, like Lena and her family, are able to find a safe haven in a resettlement countries in Europe or in the United States. Though this story is based on a camp in Peshawar, the experience of the children, like Lena and Feroza, are shared by refugees around the world. <laughs>